everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Hashtag Grow Her Game, Filipinas Football Forum's At Home Series. We are on our ninth session. I cannot believe this. And today we are catching up with our overseas-based youth team players on their journey to college. We have some interesting stories today. Um, why don't we start off with Tosh? She will um, introduce our guests for today. I thought I was part of the youth <laughs> that you were introducing. Okay, so first off, we have Katie Alexander. Katie Alexander is 17 years old from Zamboanga, but based in Long Beach, California. She's been playing football for 15 years, two years at ECNL, three years for the U.S. Academy. So far, in total, 38 tournament finalists and championship medals, 10 international youth caps with the youth national team, a three-time FIFA player of the match, six international goals for the youth national team, two-time AFC silver medalist, U14 and U15 in 2016 and 2017, and is currently on an athletic and academic scholarship to Vanguard University. So let's give it up for Katie. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and next up on our youth players, catching up with the youth players, we have Gabby Colatos. Gabby Colatos is 17 years old. She's from Iloilo and Camigin, but currently based in Palos Verdes, California. She's been playing football for 12 years, playing club football two years for ECNL, three seasons for DA. She was part of the U14 and U15 silver medalist youth national team as well. She's about to attend college one more year in high school and then going to attend college at Pepperdine's Div 1 women's soccer team in Malibu on an athletic and academic scholarship. So let's give it up for Gabby. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and next up, we have Carly Freeless from Manila and Bacolod, but currently based in Haymarket, Virginia. So she played for Virgin State Olympic Development 2014 to 2016 in Braddock Road Youth Club or ECNL 2018 to 2020 and Battlefield High School Varsity 2017 to 2020. She's also currently the team captain for her high school football varsity. And as well as she's also part of the U14 2016 Youth National Team, silver medalist of the AFC Regional Championship. And currently she's also on an athletic and academic scholarship about to go to Coastal Carolina University for women's football Div 1. So, welcome, Carly. Thanks. <laughs> and last but not the least, we have Trinity Wambot. So, Trinity is from Quezon City, but based in Toronto, Ontario. She's a football varsity player, playing football for 10 years for various teams in Peel Halton Soccer Association. Most recently, in the she played varsity at Aloysius. Gonzaga Secondary School for Ropsa. They were silver medalists in 2017, gold in 2018. In the last three years, she was playing for the Erin Mills Eagles. The, and in the GHSL, they were champions in 2019. In Jan 2020 as well, she signed up to play at Woodbridge Strikers League, won her serve team. And in 2016, she was part of the U14 Women's Youth National Team. She had two goals, five assists in five games, a silver medalist, and about to attend college at the University of Waterloo on an academic scholarship. So welcome, Trinity, and welcome, everyone, to Grow Her Game. How, how have all of you been? Good. Good. <laughs> Going. Yeah. Good. I've been great. I'm glad to see everyone. <laughs> all right. So I think we should just go straight into the whole football of it all. Um, you guys had very cute photos on the on our poster <laughs> for Grow Her Game, but all of you have grown up quite a bit since then. Um, but let's let's try to go back to the very start. Let's start off with Katie. Katie, how did you end up trying out for the Philippine national 
So my journey actually started when I was in sixth grade. Um, I was scouted. My dad was giving me information, telling me that someone was interested in asking if I was like half Filipino or if I had any Filipino blood in me. Um, and I was like, yeah, why? Um, and just a quick story. My grandpa always wanted me to compete in pageants, but I was never much like the dressy up type. So I was like, no, grandpa, I'm going to play for the Filipino women's national team. You just watch. And so when my dad was telling me that there was interest, um, I started going to the ID camps, which was later on. I want to say my eighth grade year, that's when things started to pick up. Um, and then I tried out and then like Coach Bella, we were talking about earlier, no spot was guaranteed. So we had to kind of, it's kind of like rolling dice. You didn't know if you were going to have a guaranteed spot. So you definitely had to work hard and um, show what you were made of and kind of leave an imprint on the coaches here. And then once we got to the Philippines in Manila, um, that's when we actually started trying out and we started, they started to like cut down the groups, um, which would actually then go to the training camp to make the official team. So um, it was definitely an amazing experience, hands down. I'm so thankful because I got to meet these wonderful girls here and also two other girls. Um, but no, it was definitely, it was definitely a wonderful experience. So when you take us through that, so the, you, you were saying that so you tried out um, in the U.S. and then after that, when you got to the Philippines, you had to try out again. Yes, we actually tried out twice in the Philippines. So it was a large group of girls. And then once we got those large groups, that's when we actually went to UPLB and trained for a couple months there. And then that's when they made the final decision. I think there was two or three cuts, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but we had to go through, it was a very long process, not a very long process, but it was definitely a time consuming process to narrow it down to the final 18, I believe. That was the number. So Trinity, I'll, I'll ask you about that first stage. So how, like, how about you, how did you even like hear about it to be able to even try out in the States? Uh, so I was at a tournament in Michigan and I was scouted. Um, and asked to come out to California for another tryout for the team. And so take us through the, um, the, the first tryout that you guys had uh, in the U.S. Uh, so the first tryout was in the U.S. Um, there was like, I think, a, gr a, lar a large group of us. I think there was about like 50 people. And it was over, I think, Four, three or four days so I flew out to like California then for like a week and um, yeah all right and then I'll ask Carly as well um, so how did it feel like that um, first of all having this first tryout in the States knowing that there's so many other girls Filipinos based in the States as well coming together in this whole community you know where your parents are there as well what, did, what was it like to be part of the, that community to first figure out that there's so much more girls who are based in the States as well? Um, I would say at first it was really intimidating. Um, when I first got to California and showed up to the first day of the ID camper tryout, there was a lot of girls there. Some were my age, but I think some might have been three or four years older than me. So at first I was really scared, but after it started and it got to like the second or third day, I was really comfortable and I started meeting girls who were just like me. And so it was really cool to like relate with people because we had the same background. We like loved playing soccer. We all did the same things. So in that way, it was much easier to adapt to getting into that environment, playing with the girls. And it, it made it really comfortable to keep going and trying to strive to be able to even go to the Philippines to try out. How about you, Gabby, as well? Um, take us through your journey of, number one, finding out about the, this, this community, that there is a community for Filipinos who play football based abroad. And then from, you know, that first step to being able to come together and then, you know, making that decision to go all the way for it and try out in the Philippines? 
Yeah, I'm convinced that there has to be some sort of thread for like female Filipino soccer players because I don't like we all sort of got recruited to do this one camp in the States in Corona, California. And I feel like that was like the first step. And at that point, I didn't even know going to the Philippines was a like was a goal that like that could be a goal for me. Um, my dad sort of dragged me to it. I didn't really know what we were getting into. Um, and then from there, they kind of like made cuts into like creating sort of a fill am pool. And I think like a really big factor that contributed whether we were able to play on the Philippine team was getting our dual citizenship. Because I know a lot of girls had like made it into that kind of final cut for the States players. But then getting the dual citizenship and the passport was just not like easy or wasn't an option for them. And then from there, we went to the, we flew to the Philippines and then we were in BGC. And then I think we had some trainings in Manila. I remember doing a lot of scrimmages. We scrimmaged at Teneo. And from there, we had like the giant um, tryout for the camp. And then once we made it to camp, then I think it was like every two weeks, there was a cut or every three weeks. And then we were all just lucky enough to make it onto the final roster. Um, Tosh, just a fun fact. Um, Katie earlier mentioned the final 18. It is a final 18, but uh, the 2016 team ended up being a final 16 team. Unfortunately, we lost one player because of um, an injury and another one because of passport issues. So yeah, they got their silver medal with 16 players. Yeah, that's very... um. Interesting to know as well, like with just 16 girls, you were able to achieve such great heights. So, um, Katie, take us a bit through your journey in the Philippines. So, once you got here, um, was that your first time in the Philippines? So, it was actually my first international trip at the age of 13. Other than that, I've only traveled around the States because of soccer. Um, but once getting there, I was like super excited obviously full of energy and I was like this is incredible I get to see where my grandparents are from I get to see how they grew up and what they did and stuff um but once getting there and starting to actually go through the process of like the training camps like the vigorous training because we would train twice a day um it took not only a mental toll but a physical one and I don't say that in a negative way I say that meaning we had to work hard in order to get where we were. Like they narrowed it down to the final 18, or as Coach Bella I said, the final 16 for a reason because these girls worked incredibly hard. So once getting to UPLB, I would say the main challenges was missing my parents and obviously not being around. I have a younger sister, as you saw in those um, pictures. I have a younger sister, so it was definitely hard to not be around her, but meeting all these girls kind of compensated for that and they became my family towards the um, middle of it and then we just our connection and growth just started to come together and you can tell on the field we definitely work together i would say as a family and as a moving unit so all right um so katie as you were talking about that trinity i wanted to just add in on that as well how long, like, how long were you in the Philippines during the duration of, from the tryouts and making it to the tournament? So how long were you guys here for the U14? Um, I think flew out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so you're right, you go go ahead. Oh, <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> go, go on, Chin. Okay, no, I was saying, um, I was there for about two two months or just under two months yeah and um how was that like how did you were you did you skip school or like how, what was the things that you guys had to give up first to be able to pursue this in the philippines uh so i was still actually doing schoolwork while we were training i would have to uh complete my work and then send my teachers like pictures of whatever they asked me to do if it was like a, a write-up or like um and they kind of just they, they were they were really uh helpful like they wanted to know about my experience and they were they understood about like the wi-fi and everything and that i couldn't always send everything 
exactly when they wanted me to send it. So I'm, I'm really glad about that. It's very good to know that, you know, you, you had like that understanding um, school as well. That's one of the things that players always have to go through. You know, you always have to end up missing school and being res you have to be responsible for yourself to be able to catch up. So how about you, Gabby? Take us through your experience and your hardships and things that you had to adapt to when you were in the youth national team. I, I think the biggest thing um, at first is just like, it's obviously a different climate and just acclimating to the weather. Like that took a little bit of a toll on my body at first. And then similar to what Katie said, I would say like just being that far away from home and like kind of living on your own, like your parents aren't around, just that sort of homesickness just kind of gets to you. But you're just with these girls like 24 hours, seven days a week. Like we're all sort of living together. And I think they definitely sort of became like our family, like on and off the field. And so I would say like the biggest hardship was probably like the cuts made in camp because like you you grow so close to these girls and like I just remember that like sitting in the little like what what do you call it kind of like the main little room in Los Banos like on the top of the floor and then like you just see your name on the list and you walk either into one dorm or the other dorm That's and you're good. just like waiting to see who's coming in and I I think that was definitely the hardest part because like you like leave your actual family from home and then you make a new family and then you see some of those members leave. So I think that sort of emotional side takes a toll a little bit. But I have an add on question to that, Tosh. Um, I want to ask them was like about adjusting. Was the food adjustment difficult for you guys? So I don't hard. Know if you were it was really or hard. Yeah. At first. yeah. I, I remember we had to get weighed. Oh, no one yeah. would eat. And then you guys had to wait. Oh, yeah. I'm, I remember that, too. I remember, like, getting me to eat the egg yolks was so hard. Like, I had to put it in the pond <laughs> and just, like, not think about it. And then there was a lot of, like, kind of food trades going on. Like, I remember the second year, there was this one meat that I just did not like. And a lot of the girls really liked it. And then I liked the bean sprouts and nobody liked those. So we would kind of swap on our plate. So then like our plate would be clear, but it'd be like, I ate all the bean sprouts and they ate all the meat. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely an eye opener though. Cause I remember, I think it was the second time I went back. They had me try balut and Manette. I've never, yeah. Like I've never, I've heard of it, but I never like once was like, Oh, like I'm going to try it. So it was definitely an experience, like a unique one, but. Well, one of the things that they were lucky about is they would get fresh milk because we were in UP Los oh, Banos. Yes. And they sure were well. selling ice cream, milk, and yogurt right there from the cows. You could see the cows. Uh, I'm allergic to milk. I didn't get it. <laughs> but Carly, you were also talking about it as well. You were agreeing about um, a bit of the hardship. Take us through what you experienced and, you know, adjusting to certain things, even as basic as the food. Yeah, so at first it was really hard just because my time difference is 12 hours. So at first it was really hard because I couldn't, I didn't talk to my parents a lot, <laughs> which is kind of on me because I just didn't really call them. But I was, at first I missed them a lot. I think it might've been the first two weeks. And then once we actually got into camp, just being with all the girls kind of made it so much easier. And that was like the difference between staying with my cousins. Not that that was bad because that was also great, but just being with the girls and like learning my culture through them was like so comforting. And for me to like, continue learning about myself made it a lot easier because I had all these people who were so similar to me and it made it easier from the fact that I was so far from home that I was learning like loving new people doing the thing that we all love so it was hard I mean the food too <laughs> was hard at first but it really it really grew on me I would say <laughs> I think I started eating a lot after like the second week and um it was harder when we went to Lao because I have a lot of food allergies 
So, and I'm not really careful about it. So I had a little mishap the night before the semifinals, but it was just the whole trying new things and stuff like that, I guess. Your mishap, what happened? Uh, well, we came home from a game or maybe, yeah, we came from, we came back from a game and we were eating dinner and I was eating chicken and I thought it had beans in it. And then my throat started feeling weird. So I was like, uh oh. So then I was like poking around the food and I like cracked open one of the nuts and I was like, oh, I was eating nuts and I'm really allergic to nuts. So I was like, oh crap. So then I took a Benadryl, I think, and I like went straight to my room. And I just remember laying in bed and Coach jo- Coach Joyce came in and she was like, are you okay? I was like, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't feel good. I might throw up. And she was like, okay, just go to sleep. And then I don't, I really don't know how I came back from that. But I woke up the morning and she made me chug a hydrate and it was really disgusting, but played the game and it was fine. So that was, that was an obstacle. So seeing the photos, you know, I kind of got like goosebumps remembering like some of those moments that you had. Um, Playing Thailand and drawing them, I don't know if you girls realize how big the ramification was just overall to the Philippine women's program. It's Tosh, I mean, drawing Thailand, it was 2 2. That's quite unheard of, right? So, can you um, talk us through how your mindset was entering that game and how you felt after it? Was it different, Katie? Um, Well, going into the game, uh, there was already like this energy that okay like this is a very important game and we have to we have to do everything we can to beat thailand because thailand was our competition um so going into this game we knew we had to work hard from the get-go but once start things started to get serious and it was two to one and then all of a sudden the last six minutes of what injury time who served it trin served it and i remember in the video i remember that video taking it and I, all I hear is my mom screaming, back door, get in the back door. I mean, like, <laughs> like stand there and do whatever you have to do, by all means, to get that ball in the net. And I had so much adrenaline running. I just remember the keeper, like, punching my face, but I was going to the ball, and I was like, you know what, I'm just so excited. I'm just going to run and celebrate. So um, I would have to say, to describe that game, I would just say energy, like, pure adrenaline. I think it was running through all of us at that point. Yeah. Um, but it was definitely, oh, it was amazing. I just remember sticking my arms out and just like <laughs> doing like a soaring type thing with my arms, but it was great. And Trinity, you want to chime in on that as well? Um, what did it feel like to give that assist to that goal that tied the game? I, I remember, I think the, uh, the corner kick was in overtime as well. And I just remember this being like the opportunity to like tie it up. And I was like, okay, this is it. And I just, I served the ball, right? And then I saw Haiti, Katie get her head on it. And I was like, wow, this is it. This is it. <laughs> and I also remember that game being at 2 p.m. That game was, it was like one of the hotter games that we played. So it was, it was quite tough. But of course, um, it was really those results that really led you guys to become, you know, silver medalists and at the moment really just etch your name in terms of history that has been made for women's football in the Philippines at the youth level and really just in women's football in general. And, you know, earlier I heard um, both Katie and Carly mentioning about, you know, your room about getting to know the Philippines. Um, Gabby, take us through what your experience has been like um, being able to play for the national team, the Philippine mm-hmm. national team, and how that has helped you close in to that Filipina side of you. Yeah, um, I would say, like, I've, obviously I was known I've, I'm Filipino, but I never really knew anything about the Philippines. Like, it was really just like a country, like, oceans away like I really had no concept of like what the culture was and like the experience and like the climate of the country and I think the first time I went just like being like emerged in that culture and also 
I was only 12 at the time. So I think like definitely at that age, you don't really have a sense of who you are and being exposed to like so many aspects of my culture just, I think helped me like to this day to have like a lot more pride and just like confidence in saying like my ethnicity and just like, I think that aspect too. So yeah. And of course, um, we were talking about this earlier, how you went for the, you went first time to come to the Philippines. Um, you went when you were young and for the national team, that's like the most recent one. And, but recently you've, you've come back to the Philippines as well for non-football activities, like really just to get to know it. So what have you learned about yourself and where you've come from? Yeah, the Philippines is definitely like, it feels home. Like I definitely, like, sometimes I catch myself just like, longing to be back in Los Banos <laughs> and just having that sort of like family feeling I guess that was created in the Philippines and so the first I went when I was like a baby I think I was like two or three months old I'm not 100% sure but the first time I remember going is for the um, U14 tryouts and then I was lucky enough to go again my for the U15 tryouts and so that was my seventh and eighth grade year and then last year, we went back to the Philippines and we went to Cebu and then to Camigan to see, like, we were visiting around where my grandpa grew up. So I think that that was a really special experience to actually see, like, this was his street and, like, this is where he was living with all of his siblings. So I think that also kind of resonated within me where I'm like, well, this is actually where I'm from. Yeah. And, um... Carly, you were saying as well how that it helped you get in touch with your roots. We were talking about that earlier when you were asking me about your journey and adapting mm -hmm. through the hardships. So take us through how it has helped you in a sense, you know, help you keep in touch with your Philippine roots, especially that you, nowadays you're growing up all the way on the other side of the world in the U.S. But how has playing for the youth national team helped you keep in touch with your Philippine roots? I'd say playing for the team at first, it just gave me a lot of pride to, you know, represent the country that I come from. And just being over there learning, like I remember, I think maybe it was the first or second week in camp, we had to learn the national anthem and sing it in front of all the girls. And as silly as it was and embarrassing as it was, because none of us did it well, um, I feel like even like the simple things like that just made me realize where I'm from and it kind of made me like come, I don't know, in touch with myself. And so now I just find myself thinking about, you know, my experiences all the time and looking at pictures and remembering the places I visited and what my Lola and Mola showed me when I was there. Um, and I wasn't, we, they live in California, but, um, they're actually living in West Virginia now. So I get to see them a lot more. Um, and, you know, we can talk about like all the things like everywhere they took me in the Philippines and everything. So I'd say now, I mean, not being able to go back in the past few years, reminiscing and learning more about where I'm from definitely keeps me in touch with my Filipino side and just continuing to learn about where I come from and my culture is like, it makes me feel proud to be who I am and come from the Philippines. Um, how about you, Trinity? I just want to ask about how has your experience as well, how does that help you, I guess, be in touch with who you really are holistically? Um, so it's, it's been quite great, you know, to get to know, like, my culture and where I come from. Because I always hear my grandma, she would always go to the Philippines um, every year. And it was my first time going uh, for the U14 team. And um, she would always bring back stories and, and tell me how great it is and how it's so different. So it was kind of great to go there and experience it all myself and get to know that, that side of me. And, you know, really be in touch with my mom and grandma's side and get to see... How, how different the culture is and really become aware of that, that side of me. Yeah, and Katie, you, you were also mentioning as well how you wanted to show your Lolo that you, know, that you were gonna play for the youth national team. Um, what, 
why was that so important for you to be able to do that for him? Well, my like all these other girls, um, my grandparents played a, a huge momentous part of my life. Like they were there. They um, a lot of the times when my parents were both working, they would be watching me. So I just continuously hear like the stories of their everyday life and what they went through and how my grandpa grew up and stuff. Um, but he always was like, you're so pretty and you're so talented. You should try out for Miss Universe. And for that, like I was saying earlier, I'm not much of a girly girl and I don't, I'm not much of a dress, like I don't dress up much. Um, but I was using, I just had this idea and this yearning just to really, it just really became my dream knowing that I, where how I was being raised they were implementing oh like we're so proud to be Filipino and I was like I want to make my grandparents proud because they made such an impact on my life I wanted giving them something back right like look grandpa I'm representing the country that we both love and you built this whole foundation and brought your family here like to just grow and spread and it was it's I mean in essence, what I'm trying to say is just to give back to my grandparents, which also became my dream. So, it reminds me her saying that she 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 did tell us the story about um her grandparents wanting her to join Miss Universe and that she started because Katie can sing. Mm -hmm. If we have some spare time in the end, oh. Where, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you sing the national anthem. Oh no, I remember it. <laughs> it won't be very good, but. <laughs> And of course, since all of you played for the youth national team, um, Gabby, let's start with you. If you get called back again, let's say to play for like the U19 or the women's national team, do you think you'd be able to come back to the Philippines and play again? Or what obstacles do you think would be in the way for you not to be able to come back and play again? I think I would be more than lucky to have a third opportunity to represent our country and I just think as I got older there became a lot more like obligations and like requirements that I needed to, that needed to be met here in the states so I think I would love to have the opportunity to play again but I would say the main obstacles at this point would just be like starting college and like heading down that path especially with playing the D1 soccer so I definitely say that would be the biggest obstacle. Um, how about for any of the other girls? Can you, um, what, what do you think about that? Um, do what, how about, do any of you want to play back again for the Philippines? Or do you think that college would also be an obstacle? Yeah, I agree with Gabby. Um, just because I was also called back to go for U15. But it was hard for me to return because I was starting high school and I was also starting my recruiting process for college. So as heartbreaking as it was i already know that that's an obstacle and i would love more than anything to go back and play again but yeah i would say the same an obstacle would be college um not only just playing d1 soccer and focusing on my soccer career but also academic wise like trying to get a college degree in my studies um just to set me up for the future but i think that if there was ever an opportunity in the future that i would do everything in my power to be able to go back. How about you guys, um, Katie and Trinity? Um, the long term uh, goal is definitely to go. I'm sorry, Trin. Is to definitely no go back to the. <laughs> is to go back to the Philippines. Um, but the ultimate goal is to make a World Cup. But that's in the far future. But um. Like Carly and Gabby said, it's definitely going to be a challenge to get around the college, um, navigate through the college life and stuff, and between the trainings and pursuing our academic careers, it's definitely going to be a challenge, but uh, it just all depends. There's a lot of factors in the air right now, especially what's going on in the world and stuff like that, um, but fingers crossed that it's soon. You know, um, when we interviewed Coach Yell, one of the Coach Maria, <laughs> one of the things that she answered when we asked her what did she consider success for her to be as, as a coach is that 
one of seeing one of her two or three of her players actually make the senior women's national team. So it's great that you mentioned trying to qualify for the FIFA World Women's World Cup. And that's very much a goal of ours because we really see the obstacle um, ahead of us is really beating Thailand. I don't know. I, do, I think everyone can agree to that. And this batch of girls um, drew them. So we're like this close if we keep the goal in mind and we really work hard towards it. If you really put your mind to it and want to come back, then great. I hope that um, this really works out for the Philippines. All right. And of course, um, Trinity, I wanted to start with you as well. I just want to ask about this whole college process because it's, you know, you guys are about to end high school. You're about to enter college. So how has playing for the youth national team, how has that prepared you to take on and play college football at University of Waterloo? Um, so when I first came to the Philippines, I was extremely homesick. And um, I just, I kind of had to learn to how to, you know, be on my own, be away from my parents. And I feel like that, you know, the whole experience in the Philippines will allow me to be able to, you know, go to university and be away from my parents better. I'll, you know, it, it won't be my first time being away from them for like a, a long period of time. So I think that playing for the Philippines really helped me, um, you know, get ready for things like that. Um, how about for you, Carly, when it comes to, you know, soon enough, you're about to attend at Coastal Carolina University. So take us through your experience playing for the youth national team. And how do you think that's prepared you for this moment? Right, so similar to Trinity, um, my college is seven hours away from where I live. Nothing not, doesn't compare to I was halfway across the world. But um, I think going to the Philippines and playing helped me grow as a person individually. Um, I think that it helped me become very independent um, and learn how to like deal with my own issues and like figure out what I need to grow on, what I need to like fix. Um, and just figure out my own strengths and weaknesses as a person. So I think in that sense, it definitely helped me um, know how to do things on my own, which is going to be a big thing for me next year. Um, and also playing and competing because, I mean, I've played with every level of soccer player, but being there, I've never, since then I haven't felt the competitiveness that I have during that camp. And during those tryouts that I just had such a desire and a want to not even just be on the team. And my dad always says like, you're going and you're fighting to be on the starting 11. You're going and you're fighting to be a captain. And I think ever since then I've had that mentality and I'm definitely going to bring it with me next year to school because I'm going to be competing with girls who are four years older than me. So I think the competitiveness definitely helped me grow um, a mentality to just always try and be my best and go um, to, you know, be, be on the starting 11 and just get to the highest level I can be at soccer-wise. Definitely, you know, it's very interesting to hear you say that and, you know, for that to be instilled in you as well, you know, that it's not enough to make it, you know, you want to make it to that first 11, you want to be the captain, you want to try mm -hmm. to lead the team. You know, it, it also really helps you to just aim big and, you know, aim higher. And as you were talking about, you know, being able to play at all these different levels at a young age, how about you, Gabby? Take us through how it's prepared you for, you know, your athletic and academic scholarship for college, knowing that even at a young age, you were already able to play on that international landscape. Uh, yeah, obviously living in the Philippines kind of helped all of us sort of grow and like kind of mature a little bit quicker than we probably would have if we didn't have that experience. But I think the biggest thing I'm thankful that um, the Philippines has given me is just that like very strong cultural background. And especially like starting college, like you don't really know anyone. It's a completely new environment. And I think having that kind of strong and like 
prideful like identity and background of knowing where you came from like serves as a little way to kind of ground yourself as you're meeting all these new people and also similar to what Carly said with the competitive side of things I think the atmosphere of playing in the stadium when we were in Laos especially like the night games under the lights that intensity and sort of stressful situation I think will really help for college games with already having that experience. Um, so Gabby, I have a follow-up question. Actually, when you say that you came, like, you were still not mature, I, I would, like, beg to differ. Meeting Gabby, like, she seemed very mature for her age. I don't know if everyone agrees to this. Um, what's your, what was your mindset? Because, like, you came in and you seemed kind of, indifference not the right word for it but it seemed like you knew how to talk to everyone whether they came from the u.s or whether they were um local based players you knew how to adapt um what was your mindset like there was a very we saw very like leadership quality in you from such a young age so can you um explain to us your mindset coming in i think you're giving me a little too much credit all the girls were so sweet and I think the biggest thing was all the team builders we did that I think really like came into those events like one of them I think it was like we had like white paper like pieces of white paper and then we had a they were like turtle shells and then you had to try to make a bridge across with like handing them off to girl <laughs> and I <think> like <laughs> just checking into those and like really being present in the moment was um just kind of helped with that and that's kind of like I wouldn't describe myself as a leader I think I'm a little bit like I get kind of anxious in social situations but I think knowing that with all the girls like we're all we all have something in common obviously so I think that played a big role in it you know um your point of view is like coming from your own but coming from the coaches like we really observe you well and like seeing you right now maybe your personalities have matured a lot but like and also in some way it's still there so um Gabby like very mature like you have yeah I, I can I mean you became captain in the second year so it yeah. shows um Carly very cool <laughs> she's always been very cool that's why I think that um it showed also in the way she played like she was cool to any situation so if like she needed to adapt or adjust uh you didn't really see that she was really um she showed you that uh i don't know any other word other than like she was cool um <laughs> like, composed. Yeah. That's very composed as well. yeah very composed yeah <laughs> but like yeah okay yeah and you could see that also <laughs> with the girls that she was close to she was close to casey she was close to lexi and you know they had their own little thing going and then trin you have um very shy type and it's like we really wanted to bring out like you know trinity like you have to come out in the games and you she had this great talent but we need to draw it out of her katie very bubbly very talented in other in all aspects and other aspects aside from football and it's like um what amazes me is like you all bring you all brought all these different characteristics to the team and it's what made the team special and i think uh that's what i wanted to showcase today that apart from the girls that we had on before there were these um these other girls who brought something to the table and strengthen the bond of the team and i don't think we were able to stress that enough today like that the bond that you had with your teammates because of that six week camp you had uh was really the strength of the team i feel like um and i hope you girls recognize that moving forward um, yeah yeah um, i'll just ask we got so close. um to add on to what that i said um for katie how was it like to be under number one it's female coaches and at the same time, Filipino coaches as well throughout your duration here. How, what was that experience like? Take us through how it made you guys feel because I'm sure you guys all grew up in the States or abroad and you're used to having, I'd say, male-dominant coaches, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. You can all yeah. agree to that. So what was it like to come to the Philippines, play for the youth women's national team, and be under women as well? 
I would say that it was very inspiring knowing how hard these women work and seeing how dedicated they are to the sport. I definitely think that there should be more of a female, I want to say ambiance surrounding the sport because we too can compete. I mean, look at what we've done without these girls, without my fellow teammates. I mean, I wouldn't be here where I am today. So, but definitely here in the States, I would say coaching is definitely a male dominant um, profession. Um, I was coached by my dad and by my papa. So um, going to the Philippines and having just this female energy of coaches, I felt like it was more productive. I'm not being sexist in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying as um, the people that they are in no relation to gender, I felt like they were easier to connect with us. They understood what we were going through. Mentally, they could. we were just on the same, I don't want to say level, but they just understood us more as growing young girls. So I would say it was very effective. Um, do any of you girls have anything to add, of course, about that experience of playing for the youth national team or playing under women as well? Um, yeah, I would say having like all female coaches is just, it was very empowering. And all the coaches, they just like, they did so much more off the pitch, like obviously on the pitch, but off the pitch, I think that's what kind of stuck with me the most. I remember my second year um, during training camp, Easter was, um, Easter was during the training camp. And obviously us Philams couldn't go home <laughs> for Easter. And um, Coach Marielle <laughs> was uh, kind enough to let, I think, Katie, you're with me and Viv and, and Ari. Yeah. Um, to open up her house in Tagaytay and let us stay there. And we made pizzas. <laughs> it was just, that was very touching. I think kind of events like that just kind of helped grow my passion for soccer with having such great coaches. <laughs> All right. And we and also got cheesecake, sorry, but we also got cheesecake oh, yeah. um, when we went to the <laughs> So, but it's nice to hear that your experience here, you know, it, it wasn't just something that was on the pitch. It was, you know, bonds formed with teammates. It was having that sense of family, connecting to your ethnicity, your roots, and at the same time, um, just connecting with your coaches as well, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. But before we go, I guess um, I just want to ask each and every one of you to just give, I guess, a final statement or something that you'd want to leave out to the community, to this whole women's football community. Um, I guess we'll start with you, Carly. Okay. I would say if anybody ever got the opportunity to go to the Philippines and play soccer, do it. Don't even second get yourself. I second guess myself and even like thinking that I wasn't gonna do it is like crazy to me. And not even just going, anything I'd say, um, playing soccer. Um, I have a lot of coaches tell me that I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm not tall enough. I've gotten that. Um, not strong enough. And I would say don't listen to anybody and whatever you put your mind to, you can conquer. I mean, I've had so many coaches turn around and say, no, you're too small. And now I'm going to play division one soccer and like live out my dreams. So I would say to never let anybody tell you you can't do something um, and just always strive for what the shoot for the stars like you can do anything you put your mind to. Gabby I saw you not in agreement to a couple of things <laughs> that um, Carly was saying how about you? Yeah I agree with what Carly was saying um, my biggest piece of advice is that go into it with an open mind and know that it's just it is so much more than just a soccer experience and kind of push yourself out of your comfort zone get to know different girls like talk about whatever you want like just really take every single moment and like make the most out of it and be grateful for that experience because I know I am. <laughs> How about Trinity for you you know being able to be part of as you said the U14 that, that very important campaign. So um, what imprint do you want to leave on that future generation? Um, so I agree with both Gabby and Carly. It's honestly like it's, it's an unreal experience. It just, you just, you learn so much both on and off the pitch. And it's, it's so nice to get to have like lifelong friends, right? 
and I just I feel like when you leave you you're both you grow as a person and I feel like I personally grew both mentally and physically so it's it's just a fantastic opportunity and um, last but not the least, uh, Katie, would you have anything to add just, you know, to this whole holistic experience of, you know, playing for the youth national team? I would say they summed it up pretty good, but um, I would say just be you, be yourself. I know it's a cliche, but you can't control anything other than what you do. And if you put your best foot forward, then you will walk away knowing whether you make it or not, you will know that you worked hard and you did everything you possibly could and strive for your dreams and you dream big so and all right with all that i guess first of all i just want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to you know share your experiences with us you know not it's not every day that you know girls from around the world are being able to call, get called up and play for the youth national team at such a young age to be able to do that to have those international caps as well. And of course, it's nice to see that it has helped each one of you grow and mature to the young ladies that you are now and to see how you're gonna be able to bring that in the next step of playing for collegiate football in the US for all of you. And hopefully, of course, we'd like to see you guys play as well for the women's national team in the future. So, of course, continue your football careers. And, of course, thank you very much for taking the time to be here and share your insights of playing with the national team. Um, Bella, back to you. Um, yeah, Tosh, this is kind of like a walk down memory lane. You know, it was just four years ago. But when you look back, you don't really remember the, like, the struggles that happened, right? You know, I mean, you remember it, but you tend to really remember like those goosebump moments, just like seeing those photos of Katie scoring that goal, um, how like, how momentous it was. And just to see them like from the start to the finish, even um, fighting 16, you know, what oh, we referred to them. Um, it's just great to see them as uh, young ladies now about to start their college career apart from Gabby. I know you're gonna raise your hand. Um it's a great um to see them like I don't know, I'm just so emotional because I haven't seen them and really spoken to them in a few years. Um it was great to catch up with them and I was I hope to have had like Ari and Journey and everyone else um with us maybe we can do another one and maybe we can do another one mixing with like mj yes. and casey and you know everyone else or just have a reunion it's just yeah. great mm -hmm. because we can talk about it and that's the whole point of the panel series that we do um we want to be able to engage and encourage discussion on women's football on what is going on and how we can grow it further and thank you for you girls for sharing your insights on how more girls maybe want to consider um, trying out, coming and trying out and seeing if they can make it to the national teams and um, to see how much you've grown and learned from it. Um, so thank you everyone else for joining um, Hashtag Grow Her Game Filipinas Football Forum at Home Series. And don't forget to join us on Saturday for our Visayas Mindanao chapter again where we have more coaches talking about FOF or elite coaching in Visayas and Mindanao. Um, Thank you and stay safe again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Yep.